Okay, so good evening. We'll go ahead and get started. We have a group of people that are on and uh, I want to welcome everyone to um, this is my second live event. I hosted one with the faculty and I get the sense that there are several faculty members on this evening. So welcome to them as well. Uh, so tonight I am going to go through several uh, several applications that will help um, the families that are working online and if you are planning on coming back to school uh, and you're paying attention, this will be just as valuable because um, you'll be able to work from home on the Teams platform um, and uh, it will be helpful for parents uh, that, you know, want to know how uh, the online platform works. So uh, what you see on this screen here is um, I just logged on to the school district web page and here's the announcement for tonight's event. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, and the first thing I want to talk about is um, accessing Skyward. So we are not, um, you know, in the springtime we use Skyward um, as our primary communication um, application. And while it has its advantages, it definitely has a number of drawbacks. So, um, but we still, we don't want to abandon Skyward uh, because it does provide up-to-date grade book. It provides an accurate messaging system. Um, so it still does a lot of things that um, we need for it to do. So um, to get to Skyward, uh, you would go scroll down the page and just click on the Skyward logo. Um, and I already have a browser page open. So I created a imaginary family in Skyward today so that um, I could just run through a couple of things. So when you log into Skyward, um, you're going to use a just your username. So I have a Mr. Jones that I created. And I'm going to go ahead and log Mr. Jones into Skyward. So um, here's Mr. Jones's login. Uh, and it has some information. This is the uh, desktop version uh, and Jeff Jones is the son. Um, and uh, right away what you'll see here is the wellness screening and this will come up at the top of your message board every time you log into Skyward. Um, for parents that have the application on your phone, um, this will come up on the app as well and I open an example of the app that I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, if you have not committed to your return to school, um, we need you to do that as soon as possible. Um, and the way you would do it is you would click on student info and then um, over here on the right hand side you would request changes for the child and then click on student information and then in this box we see a method of instruction is online teams. Uh, if you wanted, if I wanted, as Mr. Jones wanted to change Jeff to face and face to face instruction, I would just go on here and make that change and then press save uh, and we would be ready to move on. Some of the categories on here cannot be edited. For example, the name cannot be edited. Um, the school email address cannot be edited. If you were to change Jeff's birth date, um, that would not automatically change in the system. If you need a birthday change, um, that's something you should definitely call the school for. Um, and if you changed it on here, um, someone from the school would call you before that change was made um, in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and return uh, Jeff back to the online teams method and then go ahead and save. So when you're on Skyward, um, it's a good idea to at some point go in and review all of your information. Um, you know, you can review ethnicity for Jeff. Um, this gives a brief description of why we keep that information. Um, you would go through and answer the questions and then press save. Pretty simple. Um, the school calendar is on here, so you'll see that the first day of school is September 8th. Um, Probably a little bit later on this evening, you will see on Fridays two hour delays for the first four weeks of school um, and we will be operating as a district on a two hour delay in order to give the teachers um, additional time to plan for um, the implementation of uh, the online program. 
once school gets started, attendance will be kept in here. Uh, Mr. Nee is uh, one of the administrators who is extremely well versed in Skyward and he and I are working together to figure out how parents can submit excuses on Skyward rather than have to send a note in. Um, the student information we've talked about, your busing information will come up once that's available. Um, if you logged on to Skyward now, uh, you would likely see uh, schedule information for students as well um, so that um, you can see who your child's teachers are. Um, down here is this is a preview. Uh, I hope this works. It's technology. OK, it did. That's good. OK, um, so this is what Mr. Jones's uh, mobile app would look like. So there's not all the same features uh, when you log on to the mobile app. But for example. Mm, oh, let's so I appreciate the people who. Um, let me know that this isn't coming up. Let's see here. OK, how about now? Um, this is the Skyward mobile app. And it's a, it's a lot more dressed down from the desktop application. You can still look at the desktop app from a phone. Um, it will be um, much, much less. So um, here's the screening tool um, and you can read through. There's two questions. Um, how a kid's feeling? You're going to answer yes or no. Uh, and if you've been exposed to someone with COVID uh, and if that's the case, uh, then you would press yes. If you press yes, it's going to recommend that you stay home. Um, and we will be checking the wellness screening for the parents who um, who complete it. Look, if a, if your child has any of these um, symptoms, it's a good idea to keep them home. It's good to keep them home from themselves as well as um, for everyone else's safety as well. So once it's done, you're going to press submit, and then it tells you that um, the uh, wellness screening is completed. You can then go over to the side, click home. This is your menu. Um, there are no notifications on this because uh, Jeff is a um, he's a new he's a new student that I created today, so he doesn't have any uh, notices or any notifications. Um, if I were to have a second child in this family and I clicked here, um, that name would come up um, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I am going to share. Oh, not that one. OK, so we're back to this home screen. So um, the second thing I want to talk about is logging into the email. So I'm going to go back here to the district home screen. Uh, and if you scroll the whole way to the bottom. Of the district district web page. I keep getting messages from uh, teachers who are watching and I, I appreciate your help uh, verifying that uh, things are working or th that things are not working. Um, so I'm going to scroll all the way down to the school district web page. And um, if I clicked on this NKASD email, that's how you would access the child's email and you would access Teams through there. So um, I already have that um, that window open. Oh, maybe I don't. Here we go. 
OK, so um, let me do this. Because I want to show you um, something that's rather important um, as you log in, uh, as you log into the Microsoft Office suite. So um, I had already logged in on this sample account, um, so I'm going to whenever it comes up, it'll ask you to put in your uh, your Microsoft login information. That information is going to be for the child. It will include the child's Skyward login information, so it's their first two initials plus their um, student identification number. But when you log into Microsoft, you also have to include the at NKASD. And for students, it's at students.nkasd.com. So that information is in the letter that got sent out. Um, and so we'll get, be brought up to this screen here and I am going to go and open up Outlook. So Outlook is our email system. And you'll see that I have just a few emails that were sent. So uh, uh, a few emails that were sent, like this email here, I, I sent to myself from my school email address. Um, all you got to do is click on the email and it'll open. Uh, this is a a invitation to join the meeting that we're having right now. Uh, but if I wanted to send a message back to Mr. Banco, a simple one, I could uh, press reply, type in, um, and press send. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to press the thumbs up that you're acknowledging that you read somebody's email and they will be notified of that. Um, one really nice feature about um, about the Outlook program uh, that I find to be very useful is sometimes I start working on an email and I forget to press send. Well, you just want to check over here on your drafts for emails that you haven't sent. And I had started typing an email out to Mrs. Bitar. Um, and you know, this is an imaginary email. And whenever I was done, I could I could send that off to her and um, it would be out of my drafts. Uh, another nice feature of uh, Outlook is that whenever I go to type, uh, if I wanted to send a, an email to Mr. Timmons, he's the assistant principal at the high school, I would just start typing his name uh, and he would come up and I could just click on his name and then start typing that email. So uh, the email system Outlook, um, it's, you know, it's very much like a lot of other email programs, but uh, the way that it's connected to all the things that we already use um, is really very nice. Um, it has a calendar feature that's down here on the bottom, um, which is very easy to, easy to change back and forth from. Here's our event that we are on right now. So I'm going to go back to my email, and now we're going to move to talking about Microsoft Teams. So um, in the top left hand corner of my screen here is what we call the waffle or what Microsoft calls the waffle because it looks like a, a toaster waffle. And all I'm going to do is select that and then this brings up all of our applications that we have access to. So um, as a student, you would have access to all of these Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Teams. OneNote is a online notebook application um, that um, you know your teachers may eventually use. Um, I would expect that they would start using that uh, probably somewhere around the middle of the nine weeks um, for students to store information, to work on collaborative projects. Um, there really is a lot of benefits to using the OneNote um, application. So I'm going to click on Teams here. And it opens this screen, so you'll see this. Um, for tonight, I'm just going to click on uh, use the web app instead. So there, just like I have Microsoft access to Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint on my desktop of my screen, um, there is a Teams app. And so if you have a um, if you have a newer laptop or a, a tablet, you can download the app and have that accessible on your desktop. 
Um, you don't necessarily have to use it from like I'm using a Firefox browser here um, and it works really well in the in the browser um, internet browser. So we're going to go ahead and um, use that. So I get to my Microsoft Teams. So you'll see that the waffle is still up here in the corner. I still would have access to all of my applications. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Okay, so you'll see along the left. Uh, first off, that this is um, the team that I'm going to work out of. Uh, when you log on to a student account, um, this will be there. Will be all of the students' classes will be listed on here. So a high school student would have all of their courses, their individual courses listed. An elementary student would have um, their math class and their ELA and um, and their science and social studies. Their specials would all come up on here that they would be able to access. But since this is a, um, you know, this is a mock example, I only have one team on here. So I'm going to go ahead and open uh, this online Teams Hub. And what you'll see here is uh, is just basically a running um, chat list that goes with this group. And there are several people in the group um, and I have some things already posted in here. And what's really nice is this is like a general, you come into the classroom conversation. So I go into this particular class and I can look and see what the announcements are for the day. Um, the teacher can post videos. Uh, so I just, you know, I did a, a this cute little puppy video. It automatically connects to YouTube. So when you click on it, um, the video runs. Um, it just goes right to it. So real quick, we can check out this puppy. Who can't use a little bit of cuteness? <laughs> and then all I got to do is go right back to um, Teams. Uh, it's nice that um, everything can just be embedded in the posts uh, and um, it's easy to go back to reaccess things. Um, it really is a very convenient system. So um, across the top, so the post is the general posting board um, and we also have files. So anytime a teacher uploads items into in for the course, um, there are two places where this can be. So you'll see this class materials and it has this pencil with the line through it. As you can see, oh, hopefully you can see it's not too small. Uh, let's do this. Make it a little bit bigger. So there's this pencil here and it says it's read only. So anything that's in this class materials folder, um, you can't manipulate it. So I would, this is our phase school reopening. I can open this document and I would just be able to read it here. I wouldn't be able to click on stuff and change anything. But it opens in, a, in what is looks like a Microsoft Word um, application, uh, but this is my read only. So I'm going to go ahead and close this back. And then I have two other files on here. And so whenever files are in this area, you can actually click on them. And you can edit these. So, um, this is a form that I created um, a few weeks ago. Um, and so if something like, if I needed to add something misspelled, I would be able to go in here and um, edit those things. If it was, you know, if it was set in as a Word document. So uh, I would be able to change that and it would be saved automatically. Um, this is good. It's like a it's um, one of those options like a Google Doc where lots of people can be working on it at the same time. If you want and you have the um, desktop applications, you can click on open in the desktop app and it will open on your desktop. The nice thing about that, if you have it, um, it will automatically save the files 
um, two teams and to OneDrive, which is um, the storage unit for Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Um, and I want to go over here to assignments. So this is the this is um, a teacher version of this. Oh, where'd my assignment go? Okay, so I'm not sure why the assignment didn't come up in here, but it, it is here on this, um, you know, on our post page. And I, if I click on this view assignment, oh, Hmm. Wonder what technology is awesome. So um, this is a good segue into what to expect when we get started on this. So this is the second time I've used this, and while I've used Teams a lot with the administrators um, and with communicating with teachers, I haven't used it as a classroom um, for the classroom features, uh, and so. But what I did do is I found this uh, this short video on YouTube and it shows really well what an assignment looks like for a student. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And um, so what you'll see on this an assignment in my well, it's really quick, so I'm going to just go ahead and expand this so we can um, see it. Oh, remember what happened there. OK, so now you should be able to see that screen. I guess I can't um, expand it to full screen. So when a student logs on to and goes on to the assignments, this is what it would look like. And the person who made this video, it's only 17 seconds. Um, Microsoft Teams. They let's, can I want to go back here um, so you can see the whole thing. Um, she really does a great an job. In Microsoft Teams, they can find the title of the assignment, the category, when it's due, instructions, the ability to add work. So I'm going to pause that right there. That's really nice feature. So um, if uh, uh, if you can take a picture of your work or you do your work on a Microsoft Word document um, or you do it uh, in a picture file on an iPad or some other type of tablet, um, once you have that document completed, then you can upload that completed work into this section. And how many points it's worth. Um, and just real quick, this is the turn it in. So once you've completed the assignment, you would press the turn in button and it would be automatically submitted to the teacher. Um, so I'm going to close these couple of things. Um, go back to our um, go back to our teams here. So um, just a few more things on teams. Uh, really nice features that uh, that are included in teams. So uh, I have this queued up on my So I just sent a chat message to myself. Um, actually from myself. Uh, so the I had that little red dot and these are two messages I sent and I can respond to the chat. Um, um, I can include emojis. And then press send. Um, and then I would have received that um, automatically on my um, phone that I sent it to. The chat feature is um, you can include a lot of people in those messages. Um, you can, you know, if I if I wanted to start a new chat, I could send a message to Mr. Timmons. 
Uh, and Mrs. Vitar? Um, I could also send it to a student. Uh, that's my daughter who come came up um, and I could send that message. Um, and so those three people will receive a message. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind that this is has to be school appropriate. So we're going to, uh, you know, make sure that, um, you know, we keep it, keep it clean and uh, you know, keep in mind that um, when you work through this system, um, everybody's name comes up on who they are. Um, so you have to be responsible for what you put out. Um, this activity bell up here will give you a list. Now, since this is just um, a brand new setup for me, I don't have a lot, but on my um, on my school team's account, um, this is completely filled. Um, one of the nice things you can do is filter, um, you know, filter who you're getting messages from. Um, you can also uh, find out who uh, mentioned you, who you've reacted to. Um, there's a lot of um, features that go with that. Um, I'd mentioned about the thumbs up in, um, in the Outlook program. Uh, one of the things that you know, I, I really like about um, when you get when you get these messages is that you know sometimes you don't have to say you know you don't have to just say thanks or hello or okay I got your message. Sometimes just the thumbs up is a great way to let somebody know that you saw their message and then you could um, get back to them at a later time. The assignments would come up in this. Um, all the assignments that you would have. So if a student clicked here, all of their classes would come up that had assignments and then you would pick the one that you wanted. And obviously this assignment isn't working for some reason, but they would come up in this area. The calendar, um, so you can see that this event is, um, you know, has showed up here um, for tonight. This red line shows that this is where we are right now. You can set up meetings um, with people uh, and this is a good way to communicate back and forth with the school. Um, another really convenient way to do that is if you're in the chat um, and you would if I wanted to open this chat with Mr. Banco, um, I could just press this audio call and it would allow me to call him. So you have to do it from the application, which explains why this is. So I can real quick show everyone what the application looks like. Give me one second. Uh, I can't show it to you because that's what I'm running the live event on. So, um, you know, uh, Okay, so if I wanted to download the um, after I've been working, you may decide that you don't want to work online with the, um, you know, online with the application, the, the desk version, the browser version. <laughs> Let me get back to where I was. OK, here we are. OK, so um, as we're going through this, uh, 
this is the calendar um, as teachers um, start to plan to have meetings with students online. Um, probably the first way that that will happen is the teacher will set up a meeting time some at some point during the day. And as you log on to those meetings, so let's just, um, I'm going to put a meeting down in here. So this would this would come up on all student calendars. Um, and there would be a, a, a join button in here for you to um, interact with the teacher. Um, that will come at, at, at a point we will, um, you know, our teachers, we're going to ask them to, uh, you know, to kind of um, get into um, get into the school year. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down. OK, now it's back to me here. Um, OK, so just a few notes. Uh, so what you should expect um, as an online um, student here in, in the first month of school, uh, you know, we have a lot of kids who have um, decided, parents who've decided to send their children back to school. And, um, you know, typical first week of school, it's going to be getting used to the structures of the classroom and um, how, you know, passing out materials, how to get around the school, what they do in the class, um, those kind of things. Um, as an online student, what you should expect is um, in the first couple weeks for sure are recorded lessons and those would be either um, video recordings or audio recordings that give instructions or provide a bit of a lesson, um, maybe reading of a book um, or some other type of article uh, and instructions, um, you know, basically so that the uh, students can um, hear the teacher, um, and then the teacher would also provide assignments in a written form in files. Um, you know, it's uh, it would be instructions on how to complete probably like worksheets or um, readings for the children to go through. Um, and then you should expect opportunities to meet with the teacher. Um, that would be uh, face to face or over an audio call like a group call. And, um, you know, we'll be working those, you know, expecting the teachers to work those into the day. Um, not real long, uh, just an opportunity to answer some questions. Uh, and as the teachers get better at using Microsoft Teams, we would expect that the students would get better at using Microsoft Teams. And for the parents that are helping younger students, um, they will get more adept at using the Teams application uh, and you know, we will be able to progress quickly to um, having a, a really um, dynamic online school for students. Um, you know, the goal right out of the gate is not to provide um, synchronous classes, but very quickly within the, you know, within um, after maybe the first month of the school year, we will have some teachers that are doing some synchronous time for families that um, you know, are working, you know, parents that are working and they're planning to go through um, when they get home, uh, go through to work with their students. Um, you know, these open times aren't going to be uh, mandatory. They would be for um, the online families to join um, at their convenience. They will be recorded and available um, for you to review. Um, but, you know, you should try to stay in contact with your teachers. Um, through email and through Teams. Um, if you have questions, uh, you should, uh, you know, definitely make sure that um, you're reaching out to your teacher or your teacher's principal. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to me. Um, I have uh, put this up here. So um, if you need help, uh, I know that we have some teachers on here uh, we use this Need Skyward Access 
email address um, in the springtime for families who um, didn't have their login credentials. If you need your login credentials for Skyward or for Microsoft Teams, um, you can send an email to this address. Just make sure that you include the student's name and grade and a description of what you need. Like if you're locked out of your Skyward or you need uh, your Microsoft Teams login information, um, that can be provided to you. Um, devices, I know that um, I've gotten a lot of messages and emails about device distribution. If you are going to need a device, um, there is a link on the school district webpage to request those devices. Um, please make sure that you get on there and sign up if you need it. Um, we have a limited number of devices and we will be looking to get those distributed in the first week of school. Um, we know that a lot of families have their own devices and um, what we also know is that um, there are going to be resources that are going to need to be distributed, especially to elementary students. Um, they're going to need their workbooks um, to work from home, and we will be scheduling times and making parents aware of when they can come um, either during the day or after school time to pick up those resources. Um, and if you are going to need a device, we would include that at the same time. So information on that will be forthcoming. Um, schedules for all elementary students are in Skyward at this point, and I believe that the high school schedules will be um, made available. I think tomorrow evening, Mr. Nee was planning on opening that up. Um, if you have questions, um, you can send me an email. My email is jbanko at nkasd.com. Um, if you need help with Skyward or Teams, you please use the Need Skyward Access um, email address. Uh, and that's all I have for this evening. Um, I hope uh, you learned some things. Uh, if you have additional questions, please let me know. I'm going to do this again on Thursday night, and hopefully I can touch on some questions that people have then. So thanks for attending, uh, and have a good evening.